Here's the materials you'll need to stretch your own canvases. Two pairs of stretcher bars, gesso and a brush, a staple gun with staples, a pair of pliers and sandpaper or sanding sponges, plus a stir stick, a pair of scissors, and raw canvas. I'm using 38 inch long stretcher bars for one dimension of my canvas. Here you can see that there's a flat side to the back of the stretcher bar, and the front of the stretcher bar has a divot that holds the canvas away from the bar. This is important because it means that you won't see the stretcher bar poking through later when the canvas is finished. My stretcher bars are recycled, which means that they already have some staples in them from an old painting. I'm using my pliers to remove these carefully and setting them aside. If you were to leave these staples in, they could injure you while you're working with the canvas, or they could tear your canvas, so it's important to get all the metal out. Now I'm laying them down on a table and slotting the two corners together. Some stretcher bars are very tight to put together and some are very loose. Mine happen to be tighter. I pick them up and give them a tap on the floor to make sure that they're square. I put three of my bars together in a U shape and then I slot the final bar in. This requires a little bit of trial and error, as you might have to go around tugging on the corners. Don't worry if it's not perfect at this stage. If you're using recycled bars like mine, they might be a little harder to go together. I'm giving it a tap again to make sure that the wood slots together properly. Here you can see that my stretcher bars are not quite square. I'm using a sanding sponge which has a right angle corner to square up my sides. They also make measuring devices to do this, but I think that using something with a right angle works fine. Now I'm spreading my raw canvas out on the floor. I have quite a large piece of raw canvas. It's about 4 yards by 83 inches. I suggest doing this on the table rather than the floor, but I don't have a table big enough to hold this much canvas. I'm spreading it out and trying to get it to lay as flat as possible. You can see that there's some creases in the canvas. That's alright. I'm laying my first set of stretcher bars down on the canvas so that I can tell how much I need to spread out at once. I'm working in a small room. You need about four inches excess canvas on each side. I'm cutting out my canvas to be a little bit larger than my stretcher bars. Here you can see about how much excess I have around the outside. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see here that I had this narrow piece of canvas left where I thought a stretcher bar would fit, but it would be too narrow to wrap around comfortably, so I set it aside for another project. Here is a different style of recycled canvas stretcher. This one still has some canvas left around the outside where the person cut the painting off. I'm using my pliers to remove the staples again. 
and then I am removing the excess canvas. You can see that this version isn't held on with staples, but it's wrapped around into a groove. I simply tear as much canvas off as I can, remove the plastic from the groove, and call it a day. If you're using recycled canvases like me, you want to make sure that there's no writing on the back with a person's signature or the name of a painting. I'm using my sanding sponge to remove the title of this old painting because obviously my painting will have a new title and we don't want to confuse a conservator a hundred years in the future. Here you can see all the canvases that I cut and got ready to wrap today. Now it's time to do the actual stretching of the canvas. I'm using an electric staple gun because I'm doing a lot today, but a regular staple gun will work fine. I lay my canvas out and set my stretcher on top. I'm making sure that all of the edges have enough excess before I start, and then I am folding in the raw edge to the inside and placing a staple in the very middle of the longest length. I then jump to the other side and repeat the same thing. Then I jump to the other dimension and place a staple in the center here as well. The canvas on this side is a little bit longer, so I'm folding it a little deeper so there isn't a big excess on the back and placing a staple. Now I return to the first side, and I pull a little bit, place two staples on either side of my original staple. You don't have to apply a ton of pressure. They make something called canvas pliers, which is basically a tool that allows you to apply a lot of pressure when you're pulling a canvas. But if you don't have sensitive fingers, it's easy to do this by hand. We'll tighten the canvas up later. Now I'm just working around in a circle, jumping from one side to the parallel side, and then to the other dimension, placing staples slowly. What we're doing here is we're working the tension out from the center of the canvas to the corners. In all four dimensions, the canvas is getting pulled taut so that the loose canvas is left right here at the corner. Now I'm simply folding the canvas in and placing a staple on one side. It's hard to describe exactly how to fold the corners, but you're basically making it like a present where all of the hems and raw edges are folded in towards the middle, tucked in neatly, and then stapled securely. It doesn't have to look super perfect from the back. You mostly want to make sure that this looks good from the sides. I'm checking my work here, making sure that I'm happy with it, and then moving on to the next corner. If you have a big excess, you can cut off some of the bulk, but be careful not to cut it too short. I'm tucking it in the same way, with all of the raw edges facing the middle, and using my fingers to work out any wrinkles. I'm then placing a bunch of staples. Make sure to keep your fingers out of the way. And then the canvas is stretched and ready. Here you can see all the canvases that I stretched with that one single piece of large canvas, which only cost me about $40 at my local art supply store. And I have some excess scraps for bookbinding as well. 
At this point, it's time to put on dirty clothes or an apron because we're about to get messy. Here I have a huge bucket of gesso. Gesso is basically a primer that goes underneath acrylic or oil paint and seals the canvas. If we weren't to use gesso and you used oil paint on top of the canvas, it would slowly rot over time because the oils in the paint interact with the organic cotton material of the canvas and cause it to rot away slowly. I'm giving my gesso a mix here. You can see that it's quite thick. They sell it in much smaller quantities than this gallon size bucket that I have, but I do a lot of canvas stretching, so this is a good investment for me. Now I'm simply using a two inch brush from the hardware store. Don't use a nice fine art brush for this. A hardware store brush is fine. I'm applying the gesso the same way that you would paint a wall. There's nothing really very artistic about this part. We just want a smooth, even coverage. I'm removing a bristle from my gesso that came out of my brush. If we leave that in there, it will get sealed into the gesso and we may see it in the future. So keep an eye out for any bristles or fuzzes. You can see that the gesso is quite thick, almost the consistency of pancake batter. You can water it down to make it easier to work with, but I like to use a full thickness gesso for my first coat. It does require a little bit of working into the canvas though. You can see that I'm not really working in one specific up and down motion. I'm kind of using my brush strokes to go all over the place. This is because I'm trying to work the gesso into the texture of the canvas, into all of the little nooks and crannies to make sure that it's all totally coated. This is because we're trying to make a sealed barrier where none of the paint can get through to the canvas. Now it's time to address the edges. You don't have to gesso all the way around to the back, but make sure that your edges are fully covered the same way that you covered the front. Once it's dry, I'm using my sanding sponge or sandpaper to give a light buff. I believe this is 210 grit. You don't need to sand it all the way down. You just want to rough up the surface a little bit and smooth out any brush stroke bumps. My gesso took about six hours to dry in between each coat because I was working in a very cold studio. But if you're working in a warmer studio, it may go faster. Don't forget the edges. After that, I'm reapplying the next coat. You can see that my gesso here has a little bit of water added to it. I have about two parts gesso to one part water. This makes it more of a normal paint consistency. Personally, I like to water down my gesso more and more with every coat so that each coat is smoother and softer, making for a nice finished texture but it's up to you what consistency of gesso you like working with. You can also see that I'm using a more regular brush stroke pattern here. When I lift my brush away from the canvas, I lift it away slowly so that there's not a blunt edge of gesso. I make sure to coat my edges every time as well. Once I have the canvas covered, I go back with my brush and I smooth out long strokes so that there's a nice even coating. 
Here you can see how I'm lifting away gently with the bristles. While I'm doing this coat, let's talk a little bit about why you would want to stretch your own canvases. For starters, you can make very custom sizes that you can't find in an art supply store. Also, when you get into larger sizes of canvas, it becomes much more cost effective to stretch your own rather than to buy really large pre-made canvases. This is also an important skill if you're going to be traveling around and showing internationally, because you may need to put your paintings on and off of canvas stretchers in order to transport them via airplanes or other methods. Overall, it's a really good skill to have. I'm setting my canvas aside on a tarp to dry. You will get gesso on your hands during this part. It's not a big deal. I do four coats of gesso on my canvases over the course of a few days and then leave them to dry for at least six hours before considering them finished. Here are all of the canvases that I made. Make sure to wash your brush out really well with soap and water. I give one last final sand to all of the canvas surfaces and then wipe away the dust. And that's it. Your canvases are ready to use for acrylic oils, or something else.